Hi, I'm Megan. Hi, I'm Rebecca. And we're Sister Goals. Hi, today we're going to be talking about the latest novel that we just read, which is called LMNOP, a novel in letters written by Mark Dunn. And this is a really interesting book. It's about a fictional island named Nollip, which is named after Nevin Nollip, who came up with the pangram, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So what a pangram is, is it means that that sentence includes every single letter from the alphabet at least one time. So in this fictional town that they've created on this island, these people worship him because he was able to create this sentence and they have a statue in the center of the island to honor him that has that pangram written on it and it says the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and what ends up happening is the letters begin to fall off of the um, sign and the city and the high council sees that as a sign that that means that letter should no longer be allowed to be used in the everyday usage. So for example, the letter Z drops first, that means that they outlaw the letter Z for everything. Another interesting note, um, as these letters continue falling off from the town square sign and that statue of Nollip, the author also makes the concerted choice to not use that letter in his book any longer. So once the Z is removed from the sign, and it's not allowed to be used in the book, the author will stop using it throughout the, um, the novel from that point on. And you'll see as the novel progresses, more and more letters of the alphabet are taken away. If a vowel is taken away, they say, oh, um, you can use 50% of your letters can have an O in them now. You know, And so it's just a very interesting concept of a book. Um, I really, thought it was fascinating that the author was able to accomplish writing with those substitutions and deletions of certain letters in the alphabet that followed along with the book. What did you think, Becca? You know, I, it was really hard for me to start this book. I know it sounds silly, but at first when I was looking when it said like a, com like a completion of like the letters, I was like, oh great, are we just reading a bunch of stories with different letters in it? I didn't realize at first that the letters when you start to read it at first, I, I couldn't see that they were going to be connected, but then they do connect and you, you get the story out of it. And so at first I was like, oh God, like, am I just reading like short stories over like little letters long, but it, it doesn't go that way. So once I realized that and read, <laughs> then it was very good. I will say though, towards the end, because as Megan has stated, the author does follow along with removing of the letters as um, is coinciding with the book. Uh, the last 10 pages, I could not read. Um, so I don't know if I was supposed to go so slow or if there is like a trick to being able to read the last 10 pages, but I could not at the um, end read it because it had like M, N, O, L and P. That was the only letters that were left. And that's all he's using for those letters. So there's a lot missing. I could not quite figure it out myself. So that's the only challenging thing I would say with this book was kind of understanding the ending because of the lack of letters, which I know is the point that the author made. I think they did a good job. At, you know, is it my favorite book in the world? No, but is it very interesting how they came with this topic and then created a world around it and had us dive deep in? Yes, I think that was good. What about you, Megan? Yeah, and I should have mentioned, I'm sorry, in the summary that the novel is written in letter style in that every character, there's like a variety of characters in town. So the author progresses the story, not by letters from the alphabet, but actual like, dear sir, and you know, and then from the, so it's written as letters to other people throughout the town. I mean, so Yes, my mind was blown away by the um, ingenuity of it, by the author's ability to come up with this concept. I think it's so novel and the idea of being able to write in that manner, um, I really honored it. 
uh, I don't know that it was like a pleasure read for me. It wasn't, um, it was eating my vegetables for reading, I guess, if that makes sense. It was just, it's good for you. It's interesting for me. There's a lot of strong concepts in there and I appreciate it. It just wasn't one that I like blew through because I was in love with it. So, um, but again, interesting concept. And I know we were gonna focus a little bit too on the idea um, of power because that seemed to be a big theme running through this book. The High Council, which is the governing body of this island, is the one making the decisions about if a letter drops from the sign that that means it's not allowed to be used anymore. So that is um, a very heavy theme about the power of this High Council, people's response to it, non-response. So what did you think about that, Becca? So I did write down some of the things in the order that it started to happen once the letters were removed. Um, so as Megan stated before, the letter Z was the very first letter. And people were like, well, you know, it's not used in that many words. We won't miss it. They thought it was going to be okay. But then what happens, the first thing they do is they remove all books from the island because there's Z's in the books. Then it says, right after that, neighbors started to turn on each other. So there was ways where the council said, if you use the letter Z, one time you'd get a warning. Second time, it would be a uh, flogging or to be put in the middle of the square. What are those called? Like where you're like this. Yeah, and like one of those. And then uh, the third would be a uh, removal. And then I think there is even execution as another option on that one. It's either leave the island or be executed. Very harsh. And so one thing that was interesting and that was talked about, there was a gentleman that comes later in the novel where he's from, you know, off the island. And he's like, how does this council have so much power? Like, what gives this council this illusion of power to decide this for everyone's life? And how the people kind of follow along. But then eventually, you know, once it gets to be quite ridiculous and many people are leaving, many people have been kicked out of their houses. And later on, the local paper closes. Um, a test reveals that glue is loose on the back of the tiles. Like one of the university does tests that says, oh, all those tiles are gonna start falling off. It's not gonna be one time things. Like many of those tiles are gonna be falling off. They try and approach them. Um, it looks like Mr. Little um, is the one that they try and convince as a council member. And then the council comes up with an agreement that if you could, if, the anywhere in there could create a sentence using all the letters of the alphabet to make a sentence with no more than 32 letters then they would stop the they'd bring back all the books they would stop uh the restriction of all the letters and you know it's like <laughs> that's a lot of power that this council uh took on and what happens with this is the townspeople start to get upset and they try to create a rebellion against the council members. And so, yeah, it becomes a lot in there. What about you, Megan? What do you think about the illusion of power that the council members had? Do you think they had the right? Yeah, I thought it was um, interesting because they felt that they had the right because they felt like they represented Nollop and that this is what Nollop wanted. It, you know, like they felt like they were speaking for him. And then when people from the mainland, so this is supposed to be a fictional island off the coast of the United States, and so they call the mainland the United States, even though it's made up. But um, when a professor gets wind of this and finds out about it and discovers the glue problem and things like that. It's, um, it starts to make people realize that their power isn't coming from Nala per se. And so questioning where that high powers um, force can be reckoned with and how they can uh, stop that perceived power. And this is um, 
just a huge interesting dynamic and just what people do and don't accept at what point and what's the breaking point and out just psychological thriller in that sense of like watching group dynamics and political dynamics and religious dynamics over um, what people think something means and um, how that should be enforced. So as to me, it was just like a study in, in human behavior. I just felt like I could see all of this happening. Like I never, anything I read, it didn't feel out of the norm. I thought it could get applied to like any situation of someone abusing their power and what a response might be from the population afterwards. So, um, yeah. You you bring up a good point. I, I kind of forgot for a second, but the whole point where the council at one point, Nollip was just a person that lived on the island and that came up with this sentence and they just created a statue out of him. But in the book, like later on, all of a sudden, the council starts saying Nollip is the almighty. Like they don't say um, God anymore because the letter G is no longer allowed. And they start saying the mighty, like, or not mighty because the G in there, but there is like all knowing Nollip or they, they, they make him become this new being that was never there before, but just to keep their power, they're like, it's all Nollip. It, yeah, it's a good point, man. Yeah. Again, a fascinating read to me. So if anyone's interested in just kind of getting your mind twisted a little bit and really looking at the dynamics of power and dynamics of groupthink and what happens when people either go along with something or don't like this is a great study of that in a fairly simple quote unquote way in that you know it's just oh letters of an alphabet like what's the big deal about that and um but you do see what that means so i know our mom when we read this with her mom she was all about she's a librarian so she was all about talking about like this is all about the importance of letters and words and what you say matters and I thought oh that's another interesting way of viewing this novel too because I was um, interested in rereading it a little bit so after I finished it and Becca touched on this the last bit of it is just so simplified because they have such few letters that they're able to communicate with and not get in trouble for then I went back and I reread the beginning a little bit when they had full use of all the letters and you can just see their knowledge base was just able to be presented. So, I mean, the vocabulary they used, the sentence structure, like just the power of having those tools in their belt was able to give them this um, great communication style versus like when you take all of that away and they're just left um, doing the best with what they can, but not being quite as articulate. I mean, I thought my mom, had a good point there that could have been about the power of <laughs> words. Yeah, I think you're right, Megan. I think it's one of those books, like, is it my favorite book in the world? No. Is it an interesting read? Yes, especially, I think, like you said, if you find someone or know someone that has where they like puzzles or really appreciate, maybe, like, has been an English major or kind of really loves to use different words out there into Scrabble or anything like that. They would find this pretty interesting. Some of the words I definitely had to look up because I was like, wait a second, what's that word mean? <laughs> like, I think I know the gist of this sentence, but I'm going to clarify. But no, they did a really good job. So as always, we'd love to hear what you guys think in regards to this, how it went for you, if you have read it. Um, or if you want to deep dive into it. So as always, remember to have a great day and to like, subscribe, and share. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye.